My name is Prasad. Uh, I, I teach Kalaripayat now, and uh, that is my uh, the main uh, what uh, interest. Plus, I write uh, write uh, articles on Kalaripayat both in English and Malayalam. I sometimes go out with my students for lecture demonstrations, maybe in the universities nearby, colleges, schools, uh, folk festivals. Kalari Payat. Kalari Payat. This is a Malayalam word. Uh, actually, it is two words. Uh, Kalari means the gymnasium or the school. And Payat is the physical exercise practiced inside the Kalari. So you combine the words Kalari Payat and uh, it is the exercises done inside a Kalari. Yoga is a separate thing. That is an ancient Indian tradition of yoga. But uh, Yoga is a very uh, all-encompassing term in which uh, there is uh, exercise of the mind, meditation, sitting postures. The sitting postures are almost, almost an exercise in itself. You sit comfortably and meditate. So that is how the physical aspect comes into yoga. But uh, Kalajipayat is uh, completely different from yoga. It is very vibrant. In, in, the, in, the, in the yoga, uh, the movements are not so vibrant and the purpose is also different, <coughs> excuse me. In Kalaripayat, it is a defensive, it's, it is for your self-defense. All the movements, all the exercises are patterned accordingly, unlike in yoga. So the approaches are different for yoga and Kalari. It is, it is not at all similar to each other. The whole of physical exercises in Kalaripayat are, 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 uh, are uh, put into four parts, divided into four parts. The first is the Maypayat, which is the body conditioning exercise. Without uh, any implements or, or uh, equipments, you do the physical exercise. <coughs> there are a series of movements as you saw. The exaggerated movements of the limbs, the torso, the, the whole body, muscle groups everything. Uh, those exaggerated movements are concised later on. They are allowed or they are asked, they are demanded to concise those movements in a potential fighting sequence. So that is one part. So the Maypayat uh, or the body conditioning exercises form the first part of the exercise, first part of Kalaripayat. As and when a, a, a student is uh, admitted into a Kalari, he is taught how to move his legs, torso, hands, etc. in the body conditioning exercise. Those are, there are individual movements, uh, then later on these individual movements are uh, put together, so to say choreographed to form a series of exercises. In our calorie there are 14 series in that. I will first explain the four parts of Kalaripayat as I told you. The first part is, as I said, uh, the body conditioning exercise. Then comes the exercises with wooden weapons. You saw various kinds of wooden weapons, short staff, long canes, and the bend otta. Bend otta, is, uh, this is uh, bend otta. You saw the exercises From with a it sword. also. From a sword, sword, originally? Not was, sword, was not it sword. originally a knife, kind of? No, 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 uh, it is not knife, it is, it is a wooden weapon. This is known as otta. The, the pattern of exercises followed by the defense and offense is such that it needs a lot of explanation. So after the uh, body conditioning exercises, a uh, student is initiated into the exercises with wooden stuff, long stuff, uh, short stuff, bent ones, like that. So there the student gain a lot of uh, Please. Thank you. Gain a lot of uh, reflexes, <clears throat> uh, quick uh, movements with the short staff, uh, very forceful movements with the bent ones, etc. Then the third part is uh, exercises with the metallic weapons, sharp weapons like sword and shield, <clears throat> dagger, spear, urumi, etc. And the fourth part is uh, Varungai, which is bare-handed techniques. 
you are attacked by an opponent, uh, barehanded opponent or uh, an armed opponent, you will have to vanquish him. You will have to defend yourself by kicking him, maybe breaking his bones, by applying uh, marma. Marma is a vulnerable points of the body uh, by applying, uh, by kicking at the marmas or uh, by applying other kinds of force with the elbow or uh, with fist. So those are the four parts of Kalaripayat exercise. One is not more important than the other. But in a combative situation in ancient times, when, when war was fought uh, by the Kalari the trained people, the metallic weapons were most important. And uh, uh, training with sword and how did I tell you? Training with uh, sword and shield and spear was the most important at that time, but not now. But, uh, you were asking about uh, some of the patterns of Kalaripa, styles of Kalaripa dying off. Yes. Oh, right. Yes. <coughs> there are different styles of uh, Kalaripa in Kerala. Maybe in the northernmost part of Kerala, it was Vattain Thirippu, uh, uh, a style of uh, Kalaripa known as Vattain Thirippu. In this part of Kerala, uh, again north, but not extreme north, south to the extreme north, it is Arap, Arapukai. Then to the erstwhile Kadathanad area, that is Vatagara and uh, uh, north of Calicut, it is Pidlatangi. Pidlatangi. And beyond that, towards going south in Punnani Taluk, in the erstwhile, in the uh, Punnani Taluk and all that, it was. Uh, uh, it was Vallabhatta pattern and there was there were Uttimurusheri, another style, and another style Dronam Balli. These three styles, Dronam Balli, uh, Uttimurusheri and uh, uh, the other thing, Vallabhatta, they are all extinct now, completely extinct. As you said, are there some forms of Kalajipati which are extinct? Those are extinct. Now there is maybe one or two exercises are remaining here and there, but you can't distinguish from where it came from, from to which style it belongs. And there is another style in the in the southernmost tip of uh, Kerala, that is known as it is it was not known as Kalaripayat once upon a it was known as Adidada. That uh, more influential, uh, more more uh, the, it was more influenced by the uh, martial art of Tamil Nadu. Adjust in Tamil Nadu. So, <clears throat> those are the different styles of piety existing in Kerala now. In no, and, and it is in northern Kerala that uh, Kalari piety exists mostly in the three styles Pilatangi in Vatakara area, Arapakai here, and uh, Vatendiripu in st still northern parts of Kerala. So to start with, it was, uh, it was uh, mostly practiced by Brahmins. Because Brahmin Shalais in the Sankam period, Sankam period is between uh, 200 BC and 600 AD. During that period, uh, uh, Brahmins wielded much power in, in this part of uh, the country. And they had uh, the schools known as Shalais. In Shalais, both Vedic education was done and martial training was also imparted. So, from there, the, the body and mind a fit body and a fit mind, that uh, combination starts. So, for a, for a disciplined self, you will have to discipline your body and mind, Vedic education as well as martial tradition. That went on for a long time, but then eventually it uh, failed. I don't know the reason. At that time, various other cars like Nayas and uh, later Thiyas also started practicing Kalaripayat. And the Vedic education, education was no more important to them. Shalais remained as Vedic schools and uh, Kalaris separated to give only martial training. And in Kalaris, all castes were admitted. Nayas, Tiyas, even Muslims uh, were uh, trained in Kalaris. Because at that time, during the, after the 12th century AD, uh, Kerala was divided into so many principalities, small, small kingdoms here and there. So each king or chieftain wanted to keep uh, their own private armies for uh, 
guarding the boundaries and uh, and uh, guarding the small principality so they kept uh, private armies and the armies were uh, uh, the warriors were trained in kalavis so the individual fighter mattered at that time and uh, in a warfare at that time individual expertise also mattered unlike uh, these times the, the 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 mechanism and the other other things are now more important than the individual skill of a warrior but at that time it was so then it didn't matter who they were as long as they were good fighters and that's actually part of education the the the, the legendary education pattern was carried over wherein the even the girls were admitted to kalavi but there were no warriors uh, women warriors were very rare were not two experts you can cite but uh, per se <clears throat> even though all the all the girls were admitted to kalavi that is what we understand from the ballads ballads written in uh, 15th and 17th centuries in kerala ballads means vadakan paattu uh Uh, the ballads explain the the exploits of uh, various warriors various kalari experts like tacholudayan and aromal chegavar one woman is unniyarcha 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 was uh, an expert in in, in kalari pait but then she was never a warrior attached to a king or a chieftain it's now popular you have seen mothers coming here with children because now uh, our uh, the, maybe the aim of uh, my aim also also is like that you know, to to, uh, to it's, it's it is more used as a fitness exercise and of course the physical uh, the the defensive part is also there you develop the reflexes by wielding the weapons but you don't carry the weapons outside you are not allowed that way police will take care of your uh, security outside so that's in a refined society we will have to reposition kaladi pait in the present day society in the social scenario it is like this you do it as a fitness exercise a best fit fitness exercise then you develop reflexes also for a possible defense uh, you can be attacked on a street or you can see a person a, a, a weak person being attacked by a, a a stronger person then you will have to defend uh, that weak person then also you will have to know a bit of kalari pait not a bit of kalari pait is a real trick uh, by which you can defend yourself and the the, the person the weak person so kalari pait is very important in the present day society that way plus in the evening uh, in kerala you have noted that uh, education is very popular very very popular not popular but Uh, all all are educated they under person literacy and up to the age of uh, 15 16 all will go to schools so in the evening some kind of a, 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 a complete exercise is needed for the body one can go to a kabaddi uh, play playing ground or football or even cricket or whatever but then kaladi pait is a better exercise than anything else kaladi kaladi pait is becoming more popular these days but of course the 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 pattern in which they they arrange the uh, competitions uh, they are not not i don't think it is up to the mark uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't uh, allow to bring out the the uh, the patterns of kalari pait or the patterns in kalari pait to forefront because those are formulated by not by experts by mediocre people mediocre gurus i would say or so called gurus gurus so it has its own uh, shortcomings so whatever you have learned in a kalari you can't exhibit or you can uh, you can't take it out for the competition over there you are asked to do only very very simple things and of course the the marks are not allotted according to the expertise it is whims and fancies of the judges a lot of uh, bad things going on there Yes, yes. I don't know. I don't. I don't remember when I started learning it because my father was an expert expert in kalari pait, and uh, whose life was devoted to kalari pait. So from uh, very uh, childhood days onwards, I was I was learning kalari pait. Not learning, but I was doing kalari pait. Learning and all that. I much later only I understood that I was learning kalari pait under my father, 
and he had his own kalari this, this kalari was uh, uh, founded by him he had a kalari in 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 our village but i was not born at that time i was born in 1945 only and this kalari was uh, founded in 1948 so i joined this kalari much later when i was um, 10 or i was a, i was a school going student but before that i learned it at home uh, my father used to teach my, me and my elder brother so during school days also i was uh, practicing in a more serious way in this kalari then we used to go out for uh, exhibition or for for uh, exhibitions uh, kalari shows on various stages in various temples uh, cultural organizations etc and after that when i was in college also i was uh, doing kalari poet uh, in various temples and uh, along with the kalari troop my father's troop then i joined the rubber board uh, that is uh, government of india organization I, for my livelihood so i was working there for 20 years and uh, what, what what is that uh, rubber board that is uh, concerned with the rubber plantation in india promoting rubber plantations in india so i was working there then i shifted uh, my job to an estate a private estate in malappuram district that was a 2000 acre plot founded by britishers in 1905 britishers started the plantation business in india in india in india tea rubber coffee etc so i was in one of those plantations working Uh, for 13 years i worked there and then i came back to my village and uh, um, embedded in the kalari now so ever after that i i am teaching students and uh, writing a lot of articles on kalari poet uh, did you did you practice uh, kalari the whole time yes throughout i was, I was practicing yes i was not teaching at that time and i was not going out for any demonstrations also at that time when i was working elsewhere but then i kept to that tradition and i uh, did my exercises a bit of it to keep myself fit did your father was it, did he want you to to do something different no no he never uh, he never imposed his will on on his children well, it was it was in my village usually it is uh, the usual uh, college education i was uh, i learned botany and after that what looking for a job a rubber plantation is a handy job for a botanist so joined it like that and where did he come where, where did he learn his art uh he 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 was a, he was a physical he was interested in physical culture uh he was a son of the local raja a chieftain here the uh, charakal or kolathiri raja he was the son of uh, uh, ramavarma valiya raja who actually ruled the place but during britishers time uh, there was no it was uh, supreme power was not wielded by the local rajas they gave only certain rights to the rajas because uh, uh, britishers were supreme and uh, during the british uh, rule in 19 uh, no in 1804 when parashi rajas upsurge came he, his revolt was there uh, british was were really afraid of uh, that revolt because it's a guerrilla type of uh, <coughs> warfare he was uh, uh, waging and with his uh, nair warriors who were trained in the kalaris and the the the, the uh, aborigines so the, the tribals kurutia tribal people who were well versed in uh, archery uh, they posed a real threat to the british raj at that time and uh, in 1804 uh, lord william bentick banned practice of kalari kalari training in kerala uh, weapon training was banned inside of the kalaris and uh, those who were found out uh, doing that were maybe uh, they were arrested and uh, uh they were sent to andamans exiled to andamans maybe so at that time the kalari had the biggest setback in kerala that also points out to one of your the earlier questions answers to one of your earlier questions why some of the pat some of the styles uh died 
this can be one reason historical reason and uh, uh, in 1805 uh, one year after the ban parashi fell parashi was caught and killed and after that that ban was not there in force but then uh, some sort of uh, uh, way uh, the, the, the popularity was lost uh, for Kalari fight at that time and uh, the, the, the bigger blow was the introduction of the, the British system of education. Macaulay's uh, mode of education which was which gave no importance to the local culture. It was all an imposed uh, way of British education. You learn English, you learn the English way, you learn that pattern, this pattern. Be a government servant in the end under the British Raj, a magistrate or a clerk or a pun or whatever. So that kind of education did not give uh, encouragement to the local cultures to grow. Indians were, of course, slaves at that time. Uh, they were they were uh, British sub the subjects of that uh, British Raj, and uh, an independent thought was not possible at that time for Kerala or, or whole of India. But later on, when Gandhi came, because of Gandhi's movements, Gandhi's movement of uh, Sodeshi movement, we call it Sodeshi movement, because he gave importance to the uh, the cultures, the, the indigenous cultural forms of India. So if you have Kalari is part of your culture, you grow with that, you encourage that. If something else, uh, or maybe Tejip, a performing art form, that is your culture, you, you grow that, you give encouragement to that. That was the pattern of, uh, uh, that, was, that was the pattern of education or pa uh, pattern of movement which uh, uh, Sudeshi movement uh, uh, put forward. So during that independence movement, that was uh, just prior to independence, the thirties, there was a there was a movement all over India that we should love our own art form, we should have whatever it is, our own kind of education, our own culture. At that time, my father was drawn to that. It was during his formative years that uh, this kind of a movement, not only him, but so many others, you know, crews of people in India were drawn because of that uh, movement towards that. So, father learned Kalaripayat at that time. And he, he, he became an expert in that, like uh, so many others in Kerala at that time. So he, he, his, one of his duties was to revive the art also, which was banned by the British at that time, before that. Was his, was his love for, um, for the art because of the movement or, or because of the, the combat aspect? Because you talk about today as a fitness aspect. Mm -hmm. What was it, well, how would he would have described both, it? Both, both, both. He, he realized both. And uh, he took it as a combative art also. Because uh, there was one, one big combat uh, which was uh, arranged between him and one of uh, the gurus at that time, Narayana Nair, C. V. Narayana Nair. That did not happen because British was banned. It was in 1936, 36 March in Calicut. The venue was Calicut and uh, tickets were, even tickets were sold for that. And there was some feud between uh, these two people, my father and uh, Narayana Nair. And they were ready to fight each other. And uh, they reached that spot. And uh, then maybe uh, the collector at that time in Calicut, he was a Britisher, 1936. So he said, uh, no, no killing, nothing. You can't do that. According to law, it is banned. It is not permitted. So they withdrew. Withdrew with reluctance only. Uh, but they were ready to fight each other and uh, die uh, prepared. So, in, uh, this is Parashurama, that I will come to that. This is my father's uh, biography, uh, written by me, uh, in which I have, uh, uh, in the 1930s, the, the, uh, the, the Matrabhumi newspaper at that time, I have uh, gone to their archives and uh, taken out all the uh, daily newspapers of that time and uh, got uh, the details and uh, written down everything in it. 
So uh, <coughs> this is my father and uh, mother. Oh, it's, quite it's, a a, it's a wedding, <laughs> wedding photo. Very, very lovely couple. Uh, I've seen that. Do you have it? Do you have an English version of this? Hmm? Do you have, is there an English version of this book? No, no. Oh. Sorry. And uh, this is my father. He was an artist also. Uh, self-portrait. Oh, he is an artist. This is also a self-portrait. And this is a mother. Uh, drew by him, drawn by him. This is my brother and myself. And did your brother also uh, learn the art? Yeah. Yeah. He was a teacher. He was a teacher. Of, he is no more now. These are uh, some of the books written by my father. So why did your brother choose to, to start uh, practicing and you chose to... Who? Oh, my brother. Uh -huh. No, no. He, 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 also, he was also teaching and he was working in Bombay for a time for the Malaysian Rubber Bureau. Well, he's no more now. He is no more now. So legend says that Parashurama uh, reclaimed the land of Kerala from the Arabian Sea by building the, 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 the mache. He threw his axe into the, into the Arabian Sea and the sea receded and the land emerged, that is Kerala. That is legend. So he brought in the, he, he was the first uh, uh, guru of the Kalaji. He, he founded uh, 100 names. are legendary things which you can discount. Did you also teach your, your grandchildren and your children? That yeah, yeah, whenever they come here, they are in Madras now, uh, Chennai. Whenever they come on holidays, they, they come and practice here with the other children. And what, what kind of a feeling is that for you? Good, great feeling, great feeling. They, they, like, they like the idea of coming over to uh, the village uh, or being in the Kalajos. They have friends here. All these youngsters are their friends also. Does it, does it give you a feeling of, of, of tradition? Mm, maybe, but I don't, I don't think that they will be able to do exactly like I do. I, or I, I was able to do. Because uh, they are in Chennai. They don't uh, have time to practice at that time. They are into studies. So I don't think they will come back and be one of my disciples will take over the Kalaji now. That uh, that uh, family tradition will not uh, continue after me. I learned my from father. I told you, as a as a small boy, I learned from my father, and I was always in Kerala. So I was able to practice whenever I come back on a holiday. I used to come to the Kalaji practice with other seniors like Vijay and Lakshman and Sridharan. They were all seniors to me. That I used to practice with them. So I was able to maintain that uh, expertise. What did your father think of your technique? Technique? He, yeah, he used to take... Uh, once or twice he took me alone to... Uh, during one of his um, maybe interviews with uh, experts. He was able to take me also along and he, he asked me to do uh, some defensive activities and uh, the sword swinging techniques, uh, which he learned from a Muslim guru. My father learned it from a Muslim guru, that uh, wielding of the sword technique. And uh, I was able to exhibit that and uh, some of the defensive techniques also he asked me to do. So I think he was uh, almost, <laughs> even though he did not tell me that uh, very frankly, but then uh, I think he was happy. He was, he was not like the, 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 the traditional boat, the conventional type. He was, he was always breaking the conventions. He used to. <coughs> so what, what because I, he, uh, I, I remember him telling that uh, you need not uh, do Kalari Payat inside a Kalari. Any healthy place, any well-ventilated place with uh, proper lighting, a clean place, is fit to be a Kalari. You need not have... Uh, uh, presiding deities inside the Kalari, a hall. Maybe a Hindu will be bowing at the presiding deity in, inside the Kalari because Hindu, it, it is Hindu goddess, usually. But if a Christian comes, if a Muslim boy comes, uh, he cannot be asked to bow in front of, uh, 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 with, with, a, with a real mind. So I have, uh, you have seen some Muslim 
boy and girl also inside the colony now we don't have christians around here but when because of my father i whenever i admit a muslim boy inside the colony i ask him to bow in front of that place at that place presiding deity or whoever you bow there you think of allah in your mind whoever is your presiding deity you think of him or her and the other place is uh, but the precept uh, dedicated to the preceptors of kalari pai the old time gurus that you and i can always uh, uh, remember with respect those gurus so the other thing he is a muslim boy that youngster so he also does the same thing maybe thinking of allah this is this is the physical exercise with the mental discipline you go to a church entirely for uh, praying <clears throat> you go to a temple entirely it is dedicated to that uh, presiding deity and you go with that mind only but not inside a kalari in the kalari you come for physical exercise and for your mental discipline not for any religious purpose that is very sure my father was very sure about it so uh, uh, he is a muslim boy he comes here uh, almost every all he is working elsewhere so he comes whenever there is time and i don't know what he thinks when he goes and touches the putra i don't know i have never asked him maybe he is thinking of his father maybe or muhammad or allah or uh, almighty or whatever well if it's not important who they think of why do you have it there it is the discipline part of it you always think that there is uh, there is somebody beyond you there is some force beyond you you are not the ultimate thing so you don't uh, be very proud about yourself be humble so there is a presiding deity and that is the indian culture that is the indian culture if you don't want it in america well you practice kalari pai in some other way but then there also you have a discipline there is a, you are committed to the society you are committed to certain laws in, in the society you have a mother you have father you have brothers you Uh, you you have friends you mingle with them not in the, in the same way you behave in your uh, bathroom differently that in your kitchen it is a different pattern in a sitting room it is different so you have uh, different cultures but there is a basic culture in you that basic discipline in you how do you express that in a society you will have to express that also in a way whether it is needed or not that is another thing debatable but then you you are doing it when so when come when coming in a team you are asked to do certain things as a team 